If you see any homeless teen nowadays, chances are they are either mixed with bad company or into drugs and other harmful addictive chemicals. However, one teen showed that the sky is the limit when he managed to create Disney. He is an inspiration to all homeless teens out there. Today, we will be talking about the homeless teen that managed to create such a popular company we know as Disney. The company is just successful with whatever it does. Who is this homeless teen? And how did he manage to create a billion dollar company? Well, stick around till the end as we answer these questions and more as we delve into the intricacies surrounding the history of Disney. Without further ado, let us begin. Walt Disney was born in 1901 and despite his overwhelming success, later on, he started with humble beginnings. He was born on a farm in Missouri and his parents were not well off. The situation was so bad that both of his parents had to work to earn something for their children. Now, due to his constant hard work, Elias, his father, had become irritable and became violent towards his children. As a result, Walt's elder brothers, Herb and Ray, ran away. Seeing that the farm wasn't working, Elias sold it and took the family to Kansas City. Afterward, Ruth got measles and hence was bedridden. To entertain her sister, Walt made those flipbooks that would showcase a video when flipped. This was his first run-in with art. As his father had bought a newspaper business, Walt had to distribute newspapers every morning before school. Moreover, since his father did not pay him, he also started to do odd jobs here and there. And this was when he was just a child. This made him understand the value of hard work and persistence. In school, he usually spent his time sleeping due to the constant work every morning. He rarely took interest in his classes, besides his art, and something else he had recently taken interest in, entertainment, which was introduced to him by his friend and classmate, Walt Pfeiffer. When he saw many motion pictures and other forms of entertainment at the time, he was hooked and regularly went with Pfeiffer to the theater. Slowly, as he became older, Walt started to think about what he wanted to become when he became an adult. Seeing that he had limited opportunities, he decided on becoming a cartoonist. At the time, the Disney family had shifted to Chicago and had started a jelly factory business where Walt was forced to work. He had to work if he wanted to pursue art classes after school. Afterward, Walt joined the Red Cross in a bid to help his country during the Great War at the time. During his time with the Red Cross, he also went to Europe. When he came back, he opted to not pursue education but wanted to fulfill his dream of becoming a cartoonist. Even though his father offered him a job at the jelly factory, he refused and went to Kansas to live his dream. However, like all dreams, this one was also not easy to come by. He applied to various places but could not find an opening for a cartoonist. Roy, Walt's brother, who was also in Kansas at the time, helped Walt by letting him know of an art studio that was looking for cartoonists. And sure enough, it was. And hence, Walt got the job. During his time at the art studio, Walt met Oob Iwerks, who was also a cartoonist. Due to their similarities and coordination, they became good friends. Seeing how well they worked together as cartoonists, they opened their own business, known as Disney Iwerks. However, during this time, there was an opening in the Kansas City film ad service, and hence Walt joined. Later, Iwerks was also taken aboard the service after the insistence of Walt. Leaving Disney Iwerks for the film company was the right move, as during his time there, Walt learned a lot about motion picture and animations. He learned various things here. However, Walt also realized that hand-drawn animations looked more realistic and set to work of his own. The Kansas City Film Ad Service was impressed by his work and motivated him to work on his idea. Knowing that he had stumbled upon a brilliant idea, he showed his work, which he had spent days on, to the Newman Theatre Company. Seeing the elated response by the theatre company, Walt knew he had the talent and thus started his own business known as Laffelgram Films. Now that he had begun his own company, he wanted to make sure his company was unique. Thus, he had the idea of making animated films based on traditional fairy tales, such as Snow White and Cinderella, etc. He was so sure of his idea that he managed to raise money to rent out a place where he, along with Iwerks and five other cartoonists, was able to make six fairy tale cartoons. However, this failed as no one came to watch these. And soon, Walt had to shut down his company. This resulted in tough financial conditions, making Walt go homeless. 
Seeing that he had no future in Kansas, Walt went to Hollywood, California to try his luck as a film director. When he reached there, he was so poor that he only had $40 with him. After getting rejected, Walt understood his only hope was to go back to being a cartoonist. As a result, he started another idea based on Alice in Wonderland. This one, however, managed to be a success, and thus Walt was motivated by his work. At the time, he was working with a New York distributor known as Margaret Winkler. When her husband, Charles Mintz, saw how good Walt is, suggested him to Universal Pictures, where he had to create a series featuring a rabbit. As a result, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit was born and became an instant hit. However, seeing how efficient his team was, Mintz secretly signed all of his team, leaving Waltz alone. However, Waltz was not one to give up, and he, along with Oob, started another cartoon seeing how well his previous ones had done. He wanted to make sure that this one was perfect and worked long hours for it. And in the end, the legendary Mickey Mouse was born. As he couldn't find a distributor, he released the film in theaters. As it was the first film with sound in it, it made history and attracted a lot of viewership instantly becoming a hit. After that, many companies wanted to distribute Mickey Mouse but wanted to own the rights to him first, which Walt could not allow. However, Pat Powers, the owner of the sound system which was used in the film, said he will distribute the film until he uses his sound system. This helped the cartoon become a national sensation. People loved it all over the US. However, tragedy struck him again, and he found out Pat was keeping all the profits to himself. In the end, he owed Walt hundreds of thousands of dollars. Seeing that he had a lot of legal influence, he decided not to start a legal battle with him and hence joined Columbia Pictures, who, besides providing him legal cover, also helped him make more Mickey Mouse cartoons. Seeing that he couldn't manage to make a profit, he left Columbia Pictures. He was then reached out to by Joseph Shank, who offered to be his distributor. However, this time, he wanted something different. Walt decided to start films with color. This decision was heavily criticized. Many, including his brother, thought this idea was doomed to fail. Walt decided to make his color and sound film on the folktale of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. People were so certain that this idea was failing that they called it the Disney folly behind his back. This fueled Walt's motivation, and he was determined to make the film a success. On December 21st, 1937, Snow White was released and became the first film to have both color and sound in it. It broke a lot of records and brought in millions during its first year. With this success, Walt bought a new studio and named it Walt Disney Studios. He started to focus more on full films like Snow White rather than small clips. He then released a lot of hits such as Cinderella, etc. This made him quite wealthy. With his newfound success, he decided that he wanted to give Hollywood a source of attraction. Hence, he started the construction of a new theme park there. Theme parks in America at the time were substandard quality, and Walt wanted to change that. He went all over the world to seek inspiration, and in the end, managed to build a theme park named Disneyland that was fun, clean, family-friendly, and offered quality food. It soon became one of the most visited theme parks in the world. In the end, as you can see, Walt had become a success in every venture he had stepped in. Despite the many setbacks, he was persistent and was able to transform his fortunes. That's it for the video. I hope you liked and enjoyed it. Please let me know by pressing the like button, and if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for future notifications. Till then, take care of yourself, and I will see you in the next one.